I'm at the Martin Bachelor Gallery today, and you're going to hear a remarkable story about a remarkable woman, author and artist Karen McLaughlin. Her show, Critical Path, is on until November the 30th. So tell me, have you been making art like this for a long time? Well, you know, ever since I was a little kid, I loved to draw just about more than anything else. I loved paper, I loved pencils, I even loved the sound of a pencil on paper. And so I had done a lot of different kind of artwork. I'd done video and installation and I had written my books. And I moved to Thetis Island and after a while I started to notice that everything was moving all the time. And so, let's say it was a rainy day, and I would look out and there would be the lichen appearing on the tree trunks. And then the rain would stop and it would kind of recede. And so I noticed that everything was in motion, everything was in flux all the time. And I got interested in the tiniest, tiniest, tiniest little things. And I began to wonder if I could draw like that process that I was seeing in nature, if I could invent some kind of way that I could express how I was seeing. So the work is really about how I was looking and how I was feeling about what I was looking at. You're not only an incredible artist, but I hear you have a one in a million condition. I woke up in the middle of the night, November 5th, 2009, and I wanted to go, mommy, 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 because the intense, deep, piercing ear pain was like something I'd never experienced. And so after two years of medical investigation, I found a wonderful neurologist over in Vancouver, and she was able to come up with the definitive diagnosis of trigeminal neuralgia. And I gotta tell you, it was a big relief, because at one point, I just felt like I was maybe going crazy. How did this uh, change your practice of art? Every day, I just brought myself to these drawings for a few hours at a time, and um, it was every mark I made just seemed to be one chance and then another chance not to be experiencing the pain. You know, making the marks not only made space on the paper, but it did help create space in my head because that's what I needed. I needed to make some kind of path so that the pain could exist and so that I could also still exist in my life as I knew myself because that was the part I was afraid the most of losing. I was afraid of becoming a person I didn't even know. What I could do was work on um, a few square centimeters at a time. I could just put my head down, look at my page, pick up my pencil, and go, okay, I'm going to work on this much today, and that I could do. Oh, so you get a chance to really enjoy the art, of course, at the opening. Uh -huh. This looks like it's three-dimensional right here, like it's lifting off the page. Mm. Well, that's what I was going for. It's well, amazing. you achieved that. What is this show called, and where did that title come from? This show is called Critical Path, and I didn't have a title for the show for quite a while when I was putting it together. And one Sunday morning, my daughter Sarah came over to help me with the project management part of the show, and she used the phrase Critical Path. And in an instant, I knew, that's it. That is the name of the show. It seemed to me that it brought all the elements together and it spoke to the urgency. I love my mother so much and I am bursting with joy to see her art displayed all at once here at this show. There are times I have to confess that this journey actually felt like life or death. Trigeminal neuralgia is known as suicide disease because the pain is intense and uh, everything else just kind of gets this small in your life. Critical Path was, it was just it. I thought it explained everything. How the work brought me on a path, how the medical situation brought me on a path, and my moving from Theta Island to Victoria, and how it all culminated together in coming to this show, and being able to finally share with everyone what I have been doing 